Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about some ways in which you can improve the quality of your audio recordings at home when you're recording for the Q and Review Print Speaking to the Blind service. Even in less than ideal recording situations, there are a few simple things to consider that can make a huge difference. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the environment in which you're recording. Regardless of what devices or equipment you're using, the environment makes one of the biggest differences to the end quality of your recordings. So, basic things to consider are Find a quiet place where you won't be disturbed. Close your doors and windows, put the cat out, bring the dog in, put the kids to bed. Uh, in fact, put the kids and the cat out and bring the dog in. Much better idea. Choose somewhere that has more in the way of soft furnishings. Um, places like kitchens and bathrooms or empty rooms don't make great places to record in. Bedrooms and living rooms are much better and Going to the opposite extremes, uh, i.e. recording in closets and cupboards, always sounds terrible. They're small and boxy, so they sound small and boxy. So, for example, this is what it sounds like recording in the living room. This is what it sounds like recording in a kitchen. This is what it sounds like recording in a bedroom. This is what it sounds like, recording in a closet. And this is what it sounds like, recording in an empty room. So, um, a regular bedroom or living room is perfectly fine. If it is still perhaps a bit too lively, you can experiment by hanging some regular duvets around the room to dampen it down a bit. Oh, and resist the temptation to try to record with a duvet over your head. It's a terrible idea and always sounds awful and besides you need to be comfortable when you're recording and sweating buckets under a duvet is probably not the most conducive to a relaxed recording experience. Okay, next up is the device you're using to capture your audio. Now, you might have nothing but the onboard mic that is in your laptop and if that is all you have, then that can still be usable. But a separate microphone is most definitely preferable. But even having a proper microphone is no guarantee that you will get great audio straight out of the box. So now I'm going to show you a comparison between audio recorded on a laptop, um, a mobile phone, a pair of ordinary headphones that has an attached mic and a proper microphone. And then I'm going to show you how to get the best results out of all three of these devices. So this is an example of audio recorded on a proper microphone. And this is what it sounds like recording with a laptop microphone. This is what it sounds like recording with a mobile phone. And this is what it sounds like recording with the headphones that you get with a pair of earbuds. So, as you can hear, there's quite a difference in quality between these four options. The proper microphone definitely comes top of the heap, but the others can be workable if that's all you have. So, let's take a quick listen again. This is an example of audio recorded on a proper microphone. And this is what it sounds like recording with a laptop microphone. This is what it sounds like recording with a mobile phone. And this is what it sounds like recording with the headphones that you get with a pair of earbuds. Okay, so as you may be able to hear, laptop and mobile phone microphones are less than ideal. They are usually pretty low quality and noisy, plus with a laptop mic, it's usually mounted somewhere on the top face of the laptop, which means it's quite far away from your mouth. Uh, and of course, this means that it's more prone to picking up ambient noise and noise from the laptop itself, like the fan and things like that. Um, at least with a mobile phone, you can get it closer to your mouth, but of course, the trade-off is that it's often more difficult to perform edits on a mobile phone and uploading files can also be more difficult as well. If you do have a separate microphone, the type of microphone and how you use it is really important also, but we'll get into that later. So, if you're using a laptop without a separate mic, try to be reasonably close to the laptop and facing towards it, not off at an angle. Try to eliminate as much background noise as possible and expect that you might have to do some of the noise reduction processes we covered in video four. If you're recording with a mobile phone, you can of course position it closer to your mouth, um, but try placing some books on top of the table to keep the phone steady. Trying to hold it in the same position for long periods of time while reading is really difficult. Much better to be able to place it down and just focus on the reading itself. 
A good measure of distance is about a hand span away from the mic. Any more than this and it will start to sound far away and echoey. And again, make sure you're facing towards the mic and not off at an angle. If you're using a pair of headphones with a microphone attachment, then the same applies as the mobile phone. Try to keep the mic from moving about too much. In fact, having it in your ear when you're recording is less than ideal. Much better to see if you can perhaps attach it to something um, that you can keep close to your mouth but without moving about. A couple of elastic bands and a wine bottle work a treat as an impromptu microphone stand. Just make sure that the small hole of the microphone is pointing towards you. The hands band measurement applies again and make sure you're facing towards the mic and not off at an angle. Finally, if you do have a separate dedicated microphone, depending on the type of microphone you have, making sure that you use it in the correct way will also make a massive difference to your recorded quality. There are a few different types of mic you might come across that can be used for recordings at home. So first up, a lavalier microphone, or sometimes called a tie clip mic, because it's, that's often where it's placed, clipped on the tie, is designed to be clipped to the front of the body and uses the reflections of the surfaces around it, as well as the body itself, to capture its sound. The downside of the lavalier microphone is that it is particularly susceptible to the environment in which you're recording. So background noise and hard reflective surfaces will combine to make the recording sound pretty poor. So for home recording, I would always tend to recommend using a front fire, which means you speak directly into it, dynamic or condenser microphone like this one. This is a dynamic microphone. So the same rules apply with this type of microphone as with all the other devices though. Um, again, the magic hand span measurement can be handy and make sure you're facing towards the mic and not off at an angle. But feel free to experiment with your distance from the mic to get the best sound for your own voice. The closer to the mic you are, the thicker and warmer it will sound. Um, it, more low end. So this is what's called the proximity effect. And BBC presenters and film trailer guys use this to great effect. Think in a world. That's proximity effect. The further away it is, the clearer and more even your voice will sound. But of course, the more ambient sound will leak into the mic as well. So it's a balancing act. Uh, try, try it for yourself and see what works best for you. Okay, so once the environmental and technical considerations have been taken care of, it's just down to recording a good take. So uh, just relax, take your time and enjoy the process. Just talk in a normal voice and always an idea to have something to drink to hand as well. And again, we would like to say thank you very much for deciding to become a volunteer reader. We at Q&A very much appreciate your time and effort. Thanks very much for listening.